Welcome back. We are now going to approach the topic of absolute extrema. And hopefully you've taken some time and read through about the first five and a half pages of the notes where we go through a lot of the details. If you find you have questions on some of those things, uh, please uh, contact me and let me know. Uh, here we're going to kind of take all that information and now use it. So let's uh, consider some examples. When we say absolute extrema, we're talking about the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum of the function. Absolute max and absolute min. Sometimes these are referred to as global max uh, and global min. Now our directions here are finding the absolute max and min uh, for the given function. And so in our first example here, we're just given a basic little polynomial, and we're told to limit ourselves to the interval 0 to 5. So the first step in these problems and in a lot of the problems throughout this chapter is to find the derivative. So here that's pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward. Now recall that our absolute max and min will either occur at our endpoints here at 0 and at 5 or at places where the derivative f prime is either 0 or undefined. So we now need to check for places in the interval 0 to 5 where the derivative is 0 or undefined. Okay, so we set it equal to 0. So well, when would that be 0? So to solve that equation, we bring the 25 over and divide by 8. Now 25 eighths is 3 and 1 eighth. 3 and 1 eighth is in that, in that interval, is in the interval 0 to 5. So it does count, so we are going to be using it. We also have to ask, when is f prime undefined? But that doesn't happen here, right? It's a polynomial, 8x minus 25. And that's defined for every value of x. So there's no situation where we might be dividing by 0 uh, that we'd have to be worried about here. And so, therefore, we only have one critical point, one place where f is defined that the derivative is equal to 0. And at this point now, for our absolute extrema, what we do is we take our function f here and we're going to evaluate it at the two endpoints and at any of our critical points that are in the interval. This time we only have the one critical point, so we're actually going to evaluate f at 0, at 25 eighths, and at 5. Whichever of those three values turns out to be the biggest will be the maximum. Whichever turns out to be the smallest will be the minimum. So f of 0, if you plug in 0 to the original function, not to the derivative, original function, get f of 0 is equal to negative 4. f of 0 is equal to negative 4. We then plug in 25 eighths. And when we do that, I come up with the decimal negative 43.06. Uh, your decimal may want an exact answer, which case you got to write, you know, you'd have to go through the work of working that out arithmetic-wise and get a fraction if that's the case. Uh, otherwise, I'm fine here with the decimal answer. Uh, and then we evaluate f of 5. When we plug in 5, it spits out negative 29. Okay. So at this point, we look at our three answers here, negative 4, negative 43, and negative 29. Whichever one's biggest uh, is the maximum. Whichever one's smallest is the minimum. And as we see here, the smallest or the biggest value is actually negative 4. Right? So that's our maximum. And the smallest value is negative 43. That's our minimum. Okay. It's very important here. These values really depend on this interval here, what this interval is. That's going to really dictate where your max and min, what your max and min are. Because if we didn't include the 25 eighths, if our interval was, say, 0 to 3, then we wouldn't have a critical point in there. Where we'd only be looking at 0. And at 3, one would be the max and one would be the min. Okay, but 25 eighths is in the interval 0 to 5. So therefore, that counts. And it turns out in this problem, it is the minimum value. And the maximum value our function takes on is negative 4.